What's happening everyone? Welcome back to the workshop. Now we're continuing on with the MFT table workbench build series. So this is my multi-function workbench. It has an MFT top, a router table, and a tool storage in it as well. In the previous video, I added wheels to this now, so it's completely mobile. I can move around my shop anywhere I want. And in this video, I want to add some drawers. So it's kind of been a bit of a mess underneath here for the last few months, and I'm gathering up lots of stuff to do with the MFT top, plus all my router bits and all that kind of thing. So I want a nice place to store all that. So what we're going to do in this video is add some drawers to the MFT table. So let's get on and do it. Okay, so before we get into this project, I just want to thank today's sponsor, which is Tradeify. Now, you guys know that I would never recommend anything to you that I do not use myself, and I use Tradeify in my professional life as an electrician. So Tradeify is a job management platform. It's desktop-based and app-based, works with iOS and Android, and it's aimed at tradespeople. So this is for all my tradespeople friends out there, all those plumbers, electricians, carpenters, block layers, roofers, toilers, painter decorators, all you guys and gals out there. If you're self-employed and you're in the trades, uh, one of the most difficult thing you will all find is keeping on top of your administration work and your paperwork. Well, Tradeify is all that in one place. It makes invoicing, quoting for jobs so easy, managing jobs, tracking your jobs, tracking your invoices. One of the really nice things I've found with using it is you can set up automatic reminders for your invoices. So when you send out an invoice, you can set a date on that invoice. It can be different for different customers if you have repeat customers. And Tradeify will automatically send reminders out when those invoices are due. So that just takes one of the little headaches away for you and it keeps cash flow going. And cash flow is the lifeblood of any business. So definitely check it out, guys. I've been using it now, like I said, I'm 15 years working as an electrician, self-employed, working for myself, and this has really, really helped me out. It's so easy to generate a professional looking invoice and quotation, and like I said, you can track everything, and it all it does it all for you, and you basically have your office in your pocket. Now, I'll link a link to everything below, and Tradeify have given me a promo code, so if you type in man in shed, you get the first three months for 50% off, and you can also sign up for a 14-day free trial, no strings attached, so no credit card details, no debit card details, just head on over with the link below, check it out, play around with it for 14 days, see if it works for you, I guarantee you, you will like it, it will take a hell of a lot of the headaches out of being self-employed, especially if you have a small crew or it's just you and your van. It's very hard when you're on the tools all day also to manage all the office work. So it's really nice to have it all on your phone with you and it's nice and quick and simple to use. So definitely go over and check it out. Check out the 14-day free trial. And then if you really like it, use the code MAN AND SHED and you get 50% off for the first three months, which is nice. So check it out. Okay, back to the project. Now I have some of the pieces already cut out and just having them set in place. So let's just take you through what it is I'm planning on doing here. Okay, very briefly, just let me run you through the plan of what I'm gonna do here. So I'm dividing up the underneath of the MFT table. I'm gonna have the center section here is gonna be for the drawers. I'm gonna put another board here and this is where I'm gonna store all my tools that come in boxes, so my, like my track saw, some of my sanders and stuff, they'll all sit in here. So this section is where we're gonna put the drawers. Now, I can put drawers on the far side if I want, but for this video, we're just gonna put drawers in the front here, and I'll decide later on, see how the table's working out, whether I put them from the far side as well. So there's gonna be one large bottom drawer, and that's where the routers are gonna sit in, and some of the router uh, paraphernalia as well, so some of the tools for the router, we'll also build them into the shelf below and we're going to have two smaller shelves up on top so we'll split this in half we'll have a shelf here and a shelf here and i'm going to store all my dogs and stuff for my mft table now i have the soy panels already cut out we're going to join this whole thing up with pocket screws nice and simple it's just going to be a load of screws to put this all together and i'm going to use the existing frame as well to hold this together so we're going to fix it to the existing legs just to add some structural rigidity to the frame itself, and it will also uh, tie this bench together as well. So that's the plan. So without further ado, let's just get on and do it. Okay, so our very first job is to start pocket holding everything. Now I have most of the pieces for the carcass already cut up. I don't wanna bore you guys with that. Um, I'm using three quarter or 19 millimeter plywood for the carcass. Um, these are the stretchers, they're four inches or 100 millimeters in width. And uh, we'll have one on the top, and then one for the shelf. 
unit just underneath that and then again at the back of the shelf unit we'll have another one at the top and at the bottom and another one at the far side so we have four of these in total to put in so let's start pocket holing and start assembling this okay so i have a new pocket hole jig that i'm trying out and i am new to pocket holing so this is going to be a bit of a discovery for me so i've just mounted it to a board we have the dust extraction set up and it's actually pretty easy to set up i'll do a separate video on this but we're just going to do the stretchers so two holes either side get through all of these and then we can start assembling the carcass. Let's do it. Okay, so there's all the pocket holes done in the stretchers. Now that pocket hole jig is extremely easy to use. The dust extraction is perfect on it, but I'm getting some tear out to one side of all the pockets. You can see this side is perfectly clean and this side is tore out. So I'll have to get to the root of why that's happening. So I'm just going along and clean all these up now with the chisel and uh, yeah, we'll start assembling. Okay, so I want to get my stretchers in place. Uh, I know this is the inside of my carcass and I have marked the top. So our very first one is going on the very top edge like this. Now I'm going to be using my 45 degree clamping jigs that I made. I have a video on making loads of jigs if you guys want to check that out. Now, using these, the quickest and easiest way to do this when you're working on your own is to get it clamped to this piece first. Don't try and clamp it to the board and then try and line everything up on the edge. It's too fidgety. Just put your board that you're clamping right in the middle of your uh, wide piece so just set it down there get this clamp on first because it's, it's very easy to hold that there in place and with the hole here just put your thumb through it and just get that clamp on first now we can bring it out to our edge and line it up and things aren't wobbling and moving all over the place so that's just a little tip for you guys get this one on first and then you can get the edge clamp on Let's make sure everything is lined up 100% and we're good to drive our screws, just like that. Okay, let's get the screws in now that we have everything lined up. Let me right, get a serious grip. Okay guys, so hopefully you can see what I'm doing here. So I have my top stretcher in to the front and my top stretcher in at the back. Now I wanna put in my stretchers for my drawers. Now, I've cut a piece of MDF here. This is gonna be act as my spacer. So this is gonna be the, the width of the section I need for my bottom drawer. So I cut the biggest one first and I can keep using this spacer throughout the project because everything after this will get smaller so I can keep cutting this down to use as a spacer. So it's nice to start with a big, your biggest spacer first, then this scrap piece can be cut down as, as your spacers get smaller, if you know what I mean. So you're not chopping up loads of different pieces. So that's nice and simple. I have that clamped down here now and I can use this then to set up my next stretcher, which is gonna to go to the front and my top drawer will slide in here. So this is the next guy we wanna get in. So nice and simple, a couple of screws in there. Okay, so in order to space this guy here, I'm just have my drawer runner in place. Now these are full extension uh, bearing drawer runners. So, um, that down for a second they are also soft clothes so they're good quality ones so i can see my drawer comes all the way out to there it's our 450 mil long or 18 inches and that's roughly where i need it to be so i'm just going to set this just past the end of my drawer runner just to support everything and i'll have another one up here and then we have the center divider between them so that's where that's going to go that's how i'm lining it up Now I'll just, I'll just square a line off the center of this piece up to here and that will align this one for me. Okay, so that's all our stretchers in place on this side of the carcass. Now we need to attach the opposite side of the carcass. And don't worry if this is not making any sense to you. It will, as soon as you see this go all together, it'll make perfect sense. So our drawer is in here, our bottom drawer will be here, and this will hold on the other side of our carcass. And we'll also be fixing this carcass to the legs, the frame of the actual table as well. So let's get on and do that. 
Okay, in order to assemble this carcass, I'm just going to connect the top stretchers first, then I'm going to lift the entire carcass up, shove it into the table, and then I'm going to use my spacer to align my bottom stretchers for my drawers to screw them into this soil. So, very simple, let's get on and do it. Okay, so there we go, most of the carcass is assembled now. Um, just a quick thing on pocket holes. Like I said, this is my first time using them, but man, does it make assembling things so quick and so easy. And they really do get a good, strong grip. Now, the only thing I'm finding, and if you guys are new to pocket holes, you might find this too, because the screws are angled in the way, when you line up your two edges perfectly, the screw will actually pull this piece down um, off the edge, if you know what I mean. So that screw is angled down into the wood. So it's actually gonna pull this piece about a mil, I've noticed it pulls them down. So they're not perfectly flush. So maybe you want to start uh, just a mil out over the edge and it will pull it back perfectly flush. But uh, any of you guys who are masters at pocket holes, if you have any tips for me, I would be more than happy to hear from you guys. Okay, let's get this into the table. is a perfect fit, like a glove. Okay guys, the carcass is now in place. I'm not gonna fix it in place yet because I still wanna be able to pull it in and out because I've got some screws in for the dividers. But I have the stretchers for the drawers fixed on this side now. It's just a case again, get that spacer in there, line everything up and the two screws. So you can see just how handy it is to have a spacer to line everything up. Now I can trim this down for my drawers and for my drawer runners and use it for spacers for that too. So that's what I wanna do. Now next thing I wanna do is put the center divider in, so I'm gonna cut that and we'll get that in place. Okay guys, the center divider is in place, so just making sure everything is nice and square and uh, that it's dead center. And we have two countersunk screws here, two here, and the same below, and that's in place. Now that's half inch plywood. I'm using up every bit of scrap I have in the workshop. I have no more um, three quarter or 19 millimeter plywood. So everything from here on out is gonna be built, built from the half inch or 12 mil. And again, you guys know uh, timber prices are skyrocketing at the minute. And I've been told that plywood is going up 40%. So I'm using all the plywood I have in my shop before I go and get any more. So that's that in now. Now we have to get the drawers made up. And in order to do that, we get the drawer orders in so we can measure our drawers. So let's do that. Okay guys, I'm gonna start trimming down my spacer now, uh, using it for different parts. So I'm gonna cut a 40 mil strip off this, and that 40 mil strip is gonna act as a spacer for my drawer runners. So let's get that in. Okay, so very easy now with our 40 mil spacer to install our drawer runners. So just put the spacer in, sit the drawer runner on top of it, line it up to the edge, and it's good to go. And just do the exact same thing down here and it's a case of happy days. Just do that for all the drawer runners, and uh, it's very simple. So I'm gonna get on and do that, and I'll get back to you. Okay, so here's a situation I run into all the time as an electrician uh, installing stuff, having screws that are just a little bit too long. So this is gonna poke slightly through the plywood, which I do not want. So the remedy to that is get the screw, put it in the screw hole, just start it off, retract it, and then if you have and nice pliers like a Nipex, just catch that screw and trim it. And seeing that you have the hole started now, that screw will go in there, no problem. Just like that. So, that's what I have to do with all these now, and I get on and do it. Okay yeah, guys, I have been busy, so I have the top two drawers in now. So, where I left you, I was just fitting all the runners. So using the spacer, as I showed you, where's the spacer, there it is. So that's just the case, slide that guy in, set your runner on top of it and screw it in place. Now, to get the width of your drawers, put your drawer sides up against your drawer runners and measure the distance between, and that will give you the distance that you need to cut this guy or the measurement for this guy when you're making your drawer. Now you can see I've pocket hole these. So what I'll do now is I'll assemble this bottom drawer. I'll show you how I did that. And it's gonna be the very same as these two. So let's get on now and do that. Okay, so assembly of the drawers is nice and simple. It's just four pocket hole screws. 
So two on this side, and then we will have, just widen this out, two on this side. So I'll have two here and two here, same on the top. So uh, very nice and simple. And I'm just lining the edge of the plywood right up at the edge of the jig and drilling those two holes. And uh, that'll be plenty to hold these drawers together. So let's get on and do that. Okay, so then it's just a case of assemble these. Now they're very, very simple. It's just a case of four screws. Now I've run out of pocket hole screws, so I'm using kind of ordinary uh, wood screws. Now, they do the job. You just have to be careful not to drive the uh, heads down too far because they're not pan heads like the pocket hole screws. So you can actually burst out the pocket. So it's just a case of take it easy. Don't cinch it down too hard with the impact because the impact will just drive the screw straight through it and burst your pocket. And you don't want that to happen. Now it's just a case of put on the other side and uh, these pocket holes really make assembling stuff extremely quick. Okay, there we go. One large drawer carcass assembled. Okay, so when it comes to fitting the runners on the actual drawer, uh, you can use the exact same spacer again. So by using this 40 mil spacer right on the edge here, that will give me about a 10 mil clearing at the bottom of my drawer. So it's only a case of just clamp that guy in place. This is going to be the front of my drawer. Now don't worry, I'll be adding a bottom to this drawer. It will also be getting dividers and stuff put into it later on in another video. So if it seems a bit rickety now, we're not there yet. Now these screws are a bit long, so I have to do my pliers trick. Just like that. Okay, that is that one in place and working nicely. Now that's all three drawers in. Now, we gotta get the fronts made for these and we gotta get the bases made for these and there's gonna be plenty of dividers to go into them as well. So right now they're obviously a little bit wobbly but with a base to go in. So uh, let's go on and do that. Okay guys, I have the drawer bottoms in and that's really have to sturdy in that one up a good bit and I have this one in as well, so they're good and strong. So I have this one to do, let's do it. Okay, so this could not be simpler. I just cut a rectangle the same shape as the drawer, and that's just gonna sit down and we're gonna screw it for the side. So like I said at the start of this video, this is all going to be screwed together, nothing else. No fancy joinery, just screws. And uh, look at that, a piston fit almost. So it's a case of just, kind of things, some screws all the way around this now and screw that base in, nice and simple. Okay guys, there we go. All three drawers are more or less built now and they are good and strong. They'll do exactly what I need them to do. And I'll be adding more dividers to these in a later video when I deck out these drawers to carry all the things that I want them to carry. So there'll probably be multiple layers in these drawers as well. And that will add more structural integrity to the drawer. So yeah, we gotta just go make the fronts of these things. Uh, figure out what way we want to open them, what kind of handle we want to put on them. Or maybe we might just put a hole in it, something like that. And uh, yeah, so let's do that. Okay, so I have the face for the bottom drawer cut out. I want to fit this one first so I can measure my other two, the top two off it. So uh, yeah, that's to size. I'm just going to hit the edge of this now with a round over bit just to soften up the edges of it and make it nicer. And also by hitting it with a round over bit, if there's any slight discrepancies in the lines, the round over edge can kind of hide that a small bit. So let's get on and route this. Okay, so I want to get this bottom face on first, and I'm just going to use the line in the uh, plywood here as a guide 
and I've already measured that. Now, double soiled sticky tape is your friend here when you're doing this kind of stuff, but I don't have any, so my roll is actually empty, so I'm gonna have to uh, just measure this. Now, I've already measured it, so keeping it exactly where I want it to be, I know that I need to be 20 millimeters up from my carcass, and then I can clamp that, I'm gonna check it 20 millimeters all the way along, and then I just need to make sure that I am center. So I'll mark the center of this, mark a center line here, line the two of those up, and just make sure I'm at 20 millimeters all the way across the top. Clamp it and screw it. There's not much more to it than that, so let's get on and do it. Okay, so there's a quick close up of what I'm doing. So there's the center of my face. There's the center line on my drawer. There's my line at 20 millimeters. So I just gotta take these two center lines, line them up and make sure that I'm at my 20 millimeters all the way across the top of my drawer and clamp that in place and that is good to go. So let's do that. Okay, I'm all clamped up. I've just drilled two countersink holes here, two screws in that. So I'm gonna take the clamps off now and just check that everything is lined up. And if it is, A wee bit off, so a small bit of adjusting that. So I've only put two screws in it for now. So I can see I have to raise this side slightly so I can do that. Okay, there we go. Happy days, that is exactly where I want it to be. Now, I've just put six countersunk screws in it to hold it on, so that's on and in place. I'll take it back off again to sand it and finish it up. Now I'm gonna do these two, it's the exact same process again. Just get my centers, cut out my two pieces and line them up off this shelf here now is what I'm gonna do, or this drawer I should say. And uh, we get everything with a nice even gap all the way around. So I'll get on into that. I don't wanna bore you guys with it because it's the same thing again. And then we'll jump back in for the next stage. Okay guys, there we go. They are all in place. I have them just sanded up. I don't think I'll put a finish on them for now. I'm just gonna leave them like that. I've just put a couple of finger pulls in them because I didn't want handles sticking out. Um, so I've just hit them with a round over bit on both sides. So on the outside and on the inside. So it's actually nice just to grab with your finger, nice and easy. So a nice big drawer at the bottom, two nice deep drawers at the top. And like I said, we still have to deck out all these drawers, but that's another video. Now, a couple more jobs I'm doing on this table to make all this work. Let me show you on the other side. Okay, this is the back side of the table. So you can see the carcass protruding here. Now I've taken the, um, edge banding off and the legs off just to get everything in place. Now I've also slid in underneath here. This is what I wanted to show you. If I can get it back out again. There we go. So 12 mil MDF sheet. That's gonna sit across this carcass and onto the plywood on this side. So it closes off the top of my drawers in this area and uh, this area here, because when you're sanding and working on the MFT table, with all the holes in the table, stuff is gonna fall down through the table. So I can't actually leave the top of this carcass open like you would if you were just fitting this to a standard workbench. You could just leave the top of it open, no problem. But once there's holes in the MFT table, stuff can fall through. So that's what this is for. This is gonna close off all these areas now and stop uh, debris and stuff falling down on the tools. So I have to get this back together and we're almost there. Okay guys, we are done for now and that was a long day. Now, obviously the MFT table is not finished. We still have a bit to go on this yet, but let me just take you around and show you everything that we've accomplished today. Okay, starting with the drawers. Now we'll, in an upcoming video, I will be decking these out. There'll be layers to these and trays to go in them. So there'll be maybe two layers to each drawer. So this is gonna be all the path guide and MFT stuff. So all my bench dogs and everything and all that, that related stuff is gonna go in here again. I need to make a holder for all the dogs because as soon as I push this in, they are just all gonna fall over. So, but again, decking out these uh, drawers is gonna be an upcoming video. So that's what's gonna go in here. Everything that's MFT related and this will be a double layered um, drawer. Here's all my sandpaper now is in this one here. Again, I have to deck this out. So all my discs, I'm gonna segregate this out again, two layers and we'll have all the grits. So everything will be there to hand. Down below then, this is gonna be where all my router gear goes. So it's a nice deep drawer so that the routers can sit in there. And then I'm gonna layer this up as well. So we'll put a divider here. We have the fences and stuff will go here. 
and then we'll do trays that will hold all the router bits so the different size so the eight mil and a quarter inch half inch all that and they'll all be decked out inside in there as well so that's just the basic layout for now but again we have to fit out all these drawers so there we go Okay, so over in this end of things, this is where all my power tools are going to go. So all my power tool boxes can be stacked here. So my track saw, uh, sanders, all that kind of stuff that can all fit in here. And because I put in the half inch or 12 mil moisture resistant MDF board over the top of all this now, it's going to keep it nice and clean. So we've no more debris um, falling down through the MFT table, or if it does, it gets caught here. And I also have a way of cleaning that out now, which I'll show you in a second. And then just down this end over here is my tool cabinet is gonna stay there as well for a few bits and bobs. So we still have our automatic switch here for turning on and off the dust extraction. So that's nice to hand. And uh, yeah, let's move around this side. Okay, down around this side of the table then, I have a nice little alcove in here where I can keep my pocket hole jig. So that's just gonna sit there on the hangers. It's gonna stay on the board. There's the bag for it. So all the bits and screws will sit there and it's nice and in behind. It actually sits perfectly in there behind the bar for jacking up the um, table with the casters we put in, in the previous video. So this is a nice area to store bits and bobs. We can put screw holders and stuff here and uh, anything we want we can store in here as well. But for now, it's gonna be a perfect place to leave my pocket hole jig. Okay, this side of the table, this is the far side of the power tools. So I have my workshop heater and stuff in there. Again, we could shelve this out or put drawers there if we wanted to, but it'll probably be take more power tools in boxes will sit in there. Um, my Milwaukee packout system actually fits underneath here nicely. Again, the shelves or the drawer backs are open. I haven't decided whether I'll put uh, three more drawers here um, or whether I just leave this space open and all my packout stuff can sit here. Um, that might happen. Again, we can make that decision in a later video. Okay, so very briefly down this end, this is another area we have to address. So I have to build in a router cabinet and I'm gonna have somewhere to keep the fence and all the gear for the actual router itself and the router table is gonna go here and uh, some way of keeping this area clean with some dust extraction from underneath the router here. So this will be an upcoming project for this MST table, building the router cabinet. So let's move on. Okay, I've also done a small little job in the top of the MFT table. So I've run a cut right down here, separating the MFT table from the router top. Now, I can actually lift up this, it's not fixed down. So if I need to clean out from underneath it, I can just catch this and pick it up and give that a vacuum out if needs be. And also whenever it comes time to replace the MFT top, it's just a case of lift this section off, cut another one the exact size and drop it back in place. So the MFT top is now separated from the router table. I know a bunch of you guys had that question. What was gonna happen when I needed to replace my top? Was I gonna pull this out as well? Well, no, it's just a case I take the track saw and run a cut and happy days. Now, one thing I should point out, I've cleared out this corner of my shop. So now the fact that this MFT table is on wheels, I can just wheel this in and put it right here. So it gives me that whole floor space back, which is nice and I'm gonna the fact that I've cleared this wall out now, I'm gonna keep all the tracks and they are gonna be up there hanging on the wall. My uh, clamps are moved to this end. So yeah, it's nice and handy now that this thing is mobile, literally just case I catch it, swing it in here and I have one continuous workbench all the way down and uh, I have a nice big open floor space if I wanna do some larger projects. Okay guys, there we go. That is it for this video. Another part of this MFT table is now complete. We've added some storage and some drawers. So I suppose the whole theme of this video is how to add drawers to a workbench. So hopefully you guys enjoyed it and hopefully you've got something from it. So you can actually take that principle and just adapt it to any workbench, build your carcass, slot it in and then stick in your drawers. It really is quite simple to build in drawers, guys. There's not much to them. And uh, don't be afraid, give it a bash and cut your spacers, use your spacers that will help you out a hell of a lot. So there you go, guys. I know I know some of you are building this exact table as well. A few of you guys have been messaging me as you're, you're, build, you're in the middle of building this table. So hopefully this video has been useful to you guys as well as we move on through this project. So yeah, that's it. Now, if you like the video, guys, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. That really helps me out a lot. It helps me out with the YouTube YouTube algorithm. Uh, the algorithm might actually share the video with more people. Now comments and questions below, anything you want to know, just get in the comment section. Any comments you have about the table uh, in the comment section, I try to answer as many as I can. 
And that's it, guys. And definitely check out the sponsor of this video, Tradeify, if you're in the trades, guys. It is a, a really big help. I use it the whole time in my business, and uh, it's great to have your office right in your pocket. So definitely check it out. Uh, the 14 day free trial plus the 50% off promo code Man and Shed. Like I said, all links will be below. Yeah, that's quite a bit now. Big thanks to everybody over on Patreon, guys, who can continue to support the channel. It is much appreciated. I know I haven't been too busy over there uh, lately, but I've had a few issues with my knee. I've been in and out of hospital and stuff, so I'm kind of getting a bit behind on everything, but everything is good now, so I'm good to go. So yeah, that's it. I'm rambling. I'm going to get out of here. Uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.